Hello, everybody, and welcome to race number 17 of the season here at Hogzilla Speed Park. Three more races after this race till we crown ourselves our champion. And you can see our points leader, Rob Evans, who's ahead at least of one race there, sitting very comfortably in that seventh spot, trying to run away from Trent Dunham and others. Can he seal the deal out? We will see when we go green for 15 laps here at this um, infamous well-known track. On the pole, we have RJ Bishop, and next to him, JT Bryant. Third, Adam Garcia. Fourth, Levi McIntyre. Fifth, Ember Ross. Sixth, Kyle Matthews. Seventh, Rob Evans. Eighth, Ben Crouch. Ninth, Carter Freeze completing the top ten. Jessica Sheldon. And here's the rest of your starting lineup from 11th and 12th on back. And on the final row, we have Seth Cole and Charles Samper. So we'll quickly go through the points right now. Don't want to play what happened at Homestead here. So at least we have it set up, though. Rob Evans, again, has a full race lead over Trent Dunham, who is second in the points. Um, 49 back, to be exact. And then a big chunk between Dunham and Jack Mitchell, who's jumped a third in the points, who's 81 back from the points leader. Then you got JT Bryant, Zachary Fitzwater, uh, Zach Winkle, who gained four spots after Homestead, Johnny Gardner, Kev Shear, Kyle Matthews, and Nicholas Wade. That is your top ten. And again, they've really been separated from second place and even the points leader by at least a race or two because, well, <laughs> Trent Dunham and uh, Rob Evans have been finishing really well. But the main thing for Trent Dunham, that 14 car really has to have a lot of bad problems. But here comes the man to fire the engines. Drivers, start your Command's been given. Ticker is up. And there you can see the cars rolling on off. Those are brand new to the channel. This is one of those really well-known infrastructure tracks. Now, unfortunately, the Intercell won't be running this track. But this track is so unique. It is a, it's like a super speedway and a road course combined into one because of the way how they can fan out. And this is a, a, one of the greatest shots right here. Coming off that turn right there. I don't know why I took my ticker off there. It was really weird. I thought I put it back on, but oh well. Pace car going to make a dive down the pit road. 15 laps all we're going to need here. But don't worry. The cautions could come out and they could play a huge factor. This race has always been very infamous because of its controversial moments. So, can't wait to see what's going to happen with these cars right here. Here we go. Green flag is out. We are underway here at Hogzilla Speed Park. So, now that Hogzilla Speed Park will be only for the T-Mobile Cup Series, just like Kentucky. It's going to really be interesting with just this series, how it's going to be. The fans obviously are sad that, you know, the Intercell is not returning to this track. But, don't worry. At least they still got the Instagram T-Mobile Cup Series that comes around through here at this Georgia track. JT Bryant, this would technically be his home track right here. And unfortunately, because Ramian Fisher and Jake Baskinger are not in the series, you know, they aren't technically considered. Yeah. Anyways, you're seeing right now, Ember Ross with the lead. We're going to jump up to... Oh, Nicholas Wade in the potty. And he's going to go around. Dunham's going to avoid. One car's around. That's potty and the caution's out. I kind of figured what was going to be a moment of time, but there's also another trouble spot. You're going to see coming up ahead, there's where the brick wall is going to form. Oh, and look at that turn. Oh, my God. Jesse Turner. He just hit it. Jack Mitchell, Preston Plorn, Trent Dunham, second in points. Nathan Orvin just got sent flipping again. The third straight race that the eight cars got flipped over. And thankfully, the 96 landed on four wheels as the yellow is out. Big time on lap one. If that wreck with Boatsy wasn't the caution, that definitely would have been the one. And Ember Ross going to lead them down, come into the line, and that's big for Rob Evans in the 14. Definitely not good for the others there. Philip Goldberg, there's Preston Floyd, Mike Becker, and third in points, Jack Mitchell, who is being so consistent probably the last six races. Unfortunately, that is going to end for the 0-1 team. Look at the cars littered on pit road. You got Nathan Orman, 
Tristan Folks, Nicholas Wade, tenth in the points. Benjamin Miles, Zach Winkle. It looks like yeah, it is Zach Winkle. That's another driver top ten the points right there. Jesse Turner took that wild ride. I definitely can tell you he's not coming back. Look at the front end on both the 55 on the left front and then the front end where the radiator was in the McDonald's Ford. That is gone. Oh, my word. Oh, they wrecked again. That's Donovan Kuklon and Benny Watson. I, I think that was Ben Crouch also I seen. I don't know who that is also. Is that Nicholas Wade? Uh, uh, I can't tell. Yeah, that is Nicholas Wade. TJ Handley also involved. Skylar Dixon. Sky Commons. JT Brown. I think they may have plowed. Seth Cole. What happened there? Either, I don't know what if they plowed or... I, I'm not entirely sure, but we're under caution. We'll take a look at everything right now. Don't go away. Stay tuned. So three wrecks we got to take a look at. Well, the funny thing, how the caution came out on lap one, you're going to see from Dylan Pote's view where the 66 of Nicholas Wade is, um, the 0-2 of Wayne, or uh, not Wayne Carson, what am I saying? Um, the 6 of Sebastian Kugel and even the 15 of Benny Watson, the 66 of Nicholas Wade, he's just in a very bad spot, and that's a huge trouble spot right there coming into the course. And Nicholas Wade right there, just going to hook Sebastian Kugel on. They go up the course right in front of Trent Dunham. And look, at they have it saved right there. Pote goes into... Uh, Philip Goldberg in the 18, and then the 22 car is going to go around now. I was surprised because this was just one car that went around because everyone else was sliding around and kept it together. That brought out the caution, but then again, you know, that really was kind of obvious at that point. So it's Pote crash right there. Uh, the others up ahead here, right where Jesse Turner was at, and we, right as where we mentioned about the trouble spot where the brick wall forms, because drivers, for some very reason, like to hit that spot. Turner, unfortunately, is the one that hits it. And it's going to be thanks to Sky Comets in the 40. A couple of uh, Sony guys right there. You know, see Comets kind of push the 96 up the course. So I don't really blame Turner on that one. And you can see right there hits that brick wall. Gets airborne. That's the three of Winkle that knocks the front end out. The radiator. And look at how high that car is flying. Just about nearly over Goldberg. And wow, right in front of him. Just like flying debris there. And just everyone else in the rear is just trying to scatter. And unfortunately, no luck whatsoever. There's Plord where he gets involved. Trent Dunham gets a little piece right there. I did not see that at all. But wow, just the tunnel is actually blocked at this point. Oh, and that was uh, Nicholas Wade, remember, who flipped the eight of Orman, who flew, flew over Benjamin Miles. Keep in mind, that eight car has had three consecutive races where that car has flipped. Three consecutive races. Did it last race at Homestead and then did it before at Kentucky. So, I don't know what it is with the eight car and flipping, but I guess it's a common thing in this series. And Jesse Turner also had an exception of a, a wild ride. Now, we got to look up ahead. Well, Nicholas Wade's still on there. How did he... I'm confused. How... Or not, well, not Nicholas Wade. Uh, let's go to... So, yeah, let's go over here. Okay, these guys crossed the line. Now, I don't know what happened over here that caused an accident. So, we're taking a look right now. Now, Ben Crouch and Seth Cole, they're already trying to catch up. These guys, oh, these guys are about 130. They're trying to let the pace car on by because they're coming in so fast. Here comes Qualls. Brock, Fitzwater, Almarego, Crouch, and Cole. JT's coming way hot. Doesn't even pay attention. Plows, Seth Cole, Sky Commons. That's what's going to explain it. And then they really just got into each other horribly. There's Kukulon, Trent Dunham. TJ Haley, you're going to see, is going to use the brakes smartly. And. I mean, just absolutely terrible of driving for some of these people, just not knowing when to slow down. So, caution's out. It's going to wipe out a good chunk of the field. I can tell that for sure. Ross, the leader, let's take it back to the green. Pace cars giving us the one lap to go. A chunk of the field just got taken out out of all that, including Nathan Orman. I'm not surprised he was the first retiree right there. Preston Plore, Tristan Folks, uh, Nicholas Wade, Jack Mitchell. 
Benjamin Miles, Philip Goldberg, Zach Winkle, Jesse Turner, TJ Hanley, Sebastian Kugelon, Charles Sanford, Trent Dunham, second in the points. He's going to retire out in 30th position with no fuel. That's going to be a big blow right there. Benny Watson, Sky Comets, and JT Bryant also out of the race as well. Top 10 rundown when we go back to green flag racing will include Ember Ross, Carter Friesen, Kev Shear, Kyle Keith, Jonathan Zorlin, Joshua Scully, Jack Halleck, Jessica Shelton, RJ Bishop, Kyle Matthews. That's your top 10. Green flag is back underway here at Auxilla. As it was dealing with a little bit of a frame rate issue there, but I, I'm now good back to go there. Well, good news for Rob Evans. It's like him get, going for that championship couldn't be much easier now with the fact that Trent Dunham retired out of the race. But the fact that more of his competition keeps getting involved in wrecks, nine times out of ten, the stupid wrecks there, and he keeps avoiding them, that's been good for that Conseco Pontiac. Kind of funny how a Ron Hornet car, which normally struggled in 2001, is leading the championship. Yeah. Looking through, everyone's going to be all good to go, at least I hope, throughout this turn. Yes, indeed, they will. Beck really got separated there. Meanwhile, here comes Sicoli. He went on the high line. That's not a good idea, because here comes Jonathan Zorlin. Remember, in the inner cell, he's a free agent. He's trying to prove a point. And Sicoli. Trying to fight back on that, on that line right there. And we'll do so. We'll get the lead from Jonathan Zorlin in the 27. Keep in mind, too, Rob Evans still is yet to win a race. Hard to believe he's been this consistent, but he has not yet won a race. Oh, Garcia nearly just got McIntyre right there. That was a little close right there. Coming to the line, though. Shelton trying to look in the inside. Can she get it at the line? No. Sicoli led that lap. Here comes Dylan Young, who's been struggling this season. Good to see him, Kyle Keith, Adam Garcia finally up here. This is good to see the 29. He's just been having absolutely zero luck. Jack Halleck, who's been having such a cursed season, where every time we kind of talk about him, the car likes to blow up, which is not really good. And speaking of Rob Evans, hanging around the rear of the field, which he's playing smart, kind of seeing the rear of the field, and then the last few laps kind of work your way up to the front. Meanwhile, it is now all Diego Yepes. Currently, right now, he is an NRSL free agent. Driving that 21 Motorcraft forward. Did not have a good Xfinity series last season in the NRSL. And here he is in T-Mobile trying to prove himself. But even though all the, all the rides got filled up, he still got himself to prove that he could get a ride next season. Who knows? Probably sure that he'll be in uh, T-Mobile next season. Yeah, not too sure because, you know, Signups could be like quite a ways probably next year and all in 2019, but you never know what can happen with Yepes, though. And meanwhile, Carter Friesen, one of the new drivers going to be for the Xfinity Series here. Battling with Jonathan Zerl, who's been a long time in Russell running candidate, will not be in any ride at all next season. Hard enough to believe. And at the line, I think Zorlin, yes, barely led at the line. Zorlin is a free agent. Hard enough to believe again. And Jack Halleck out to the point. Bring along Adam Garcia. Wow. That is probably one of the greatest signs we could see. And wait a minute, I just realized. Oh, never mind. Adam Garcia, though. <clears throat> Again, great to see he's finally up here in the front. He has just been having absolutely zero luck in that 29 car. Nothing has been going his way at all. Finally, he's out here in the front. And he is leading the pack ahead of Zachary Fitzwater, Ember Ross, Kyle Keith, and Rob Evans, the points leader. I I hear a, I hear a rack up. Caution's out. Oh, it's Dylan Young in the 92. Oh, it's Jack Halleck in the 7. And man, that car has got to be cursed or something. And Yepes, he was up in the front. What happened to him? Caution will wait for the second time. I just heard it in the background. And I think the keyword thing, Jonathan Zorlin, I think may have had something to do with it. I'm not entirely sure. But coming to the line, here comes Amber Ross yet again. And it looks like it's safe to say, safe to say that she's going to get 
the extra bonus point for leading the most laps. Coming to the line, the 36 who led at the at the caution for the first one will lead under the second caution. Over R.J. Bishop and Rob, uh, Kev Shear barely beat out Rob Evans there. You just noticed. They shot by the 17. And Caution's out yet again here. And remember, too, there'll be three races left after this, so those those points are on the line for just about everyone here. But the fact that Trent Dunham got knocked out of the race and Rob Evans is still continuing really is going to hurt, especially also the fact that Dylan Young, Jack Alex is going to be out of it, Diego Yepes, he just put his car behind the wall. So he's done. Dylan Young, I think it's safe to say with the way how his speed is, that car is also done, too. So those three cars... Yeah, it's safe to say they're they're SOL right now. Just check with Young just to be sure. Because Halleck's car, his car was disabled and got towed to pit road, so really wouldn't surprise me if he's out of it. Dylan Young, yep, I'm not surprised. He's out of it too. So caution is out for the second time today. Ember Ross out in front. Let's take a look at ourselves, our second caution. So this is what brought our second caution. You can see Yep as in the 21 kind of Starting to wake his way down low. And Young's going to kind of move up the course a bit. Kind of squeezing in Vince Almorego with him as well. And Almorego kind of like the first caution with that incident before. They're going to go up the course. And of course, Jack Halleck is a target at this point. Just goes right into the seven. Almorego keeps his car together. Halleck's going to go up the course. And oh my goodness. Already catching air with the help of Dylan Young. He's going to go upside down. Actually through the catch fence. Which you got to remember the catch fence here is not really that high. So the front of that car is just literally going right through it. And I believe the car actually just continues to skid along and then actually goes off the wall entirely and comes back down on four wheels, which is a good sign. But those three drivers, they are out of it there. That's better news for Rob Evans. Caution's out. Ember Ross continuing to lead. Let's take it back to the green. Welcome back as Pace Car resumes the one lap to go out of the race after that. They include those three cars we mentioned, Dylan Young, Diego Yepes, and Jack Halleck. They're all out of the race. Now, I just realized when I look back at the standings before uh, coming back here, the highest running driver that is not named Rob Evans in the drivers that are trying to catch the 14 is actually the 77 of Zachary Fitzwater. He is currently fifth in the points. And then, I know it's going to kind of stop right now. Looking at the rest of the drivers that are at least continuing on that could have a shot, they include Johnny Gardner, Kev Shear, Kyle Matthews. Those are the rest of the top 10 that are still on the track that are able to catch that 14 and at least get some ground gain on them. But the fact that more cars are retiring out of the race is helping the 14 car out. And the only one of those drivers that's behind the, or at least ahead of the 14, that's at least still in the top 10 is the 17 of Kev Shearer. Everybody else is behind. So I guarantee you when the green flag comes out, they're going to push that 14 to the high line. At least everyone's hoping. Ember Ross, safe to say, she's going to lead the most laps. She's going to get an extra bonus point. Second is RJ Bishop. Third, Kev Shearer. Fourth, as mentioned, Rob Evans. A lot of eyes are going to be on that rookie. Fifth, Andrew Miller. Sixth, Jessica Sheldon. Seventh, Kyle Matthews. Eighth, Zachary Fitzwater. Ninth, Kyle Keith. Complete the top ten, Joshua Sicoli. A lot is at stake here for these drivers. Pace car back down the pit road. Here we go. Green flag back underway here at Hogzilla Speed Park. And for Kev Shear, what do you do if, to try to catch that 14 to know that you still have a shot for the title? Second looking underneath. Here he goes. Here comes RJ. Here comes Kev. Kev trying to look through the middle. And Miller's going to push the 14 to the high line. That is probably great news for Kev Shear, Zachary Fitzwater, and Kyle Matthews. I guess also you could say Ben Crouch as well because he's 11th in the points. And Johnny Gardner in the 43. Speed of Gardner. Oh, didn't like that spot where he was in. Sicoli kind of forced the matter there and almost caused an accident. And no surprise. Wow, that 14 fell all the way immediately to the rear of the field. Just about. James Qualls and William Brock trying to do what they can to at least catch up to uh, Ben Crouch in the 25. Oh, McIntyre and Almorego. Almorego's going to slap the wall there. That's going to help Qualls and Brock try to get a spot.
Quasi is going to have no problem. William Brock kind of had a little bit of a difficulty because he's on the high line. Cars are so spread out. Two to go when we hit the line. And wait a minute. Oh, for a second, I thought they were slowing now, but I'm starting to see things there. Adam Garcia on pit road. Friesen leading at the line, I think. No, they're saying Johnny Garner. That's a big bonus point for the 43. Oh, and Kyle Keith, I just seen him in the 93. He got the corner starting to pinch. And already Rob Evans, he was in the rear of the field. Now he's working his way back up to the front. Zorlin, back to the point. They're doing work on the 29 now. McIntyre trying to get the lead. Here comes Rob Evans, second on that inside line. Trying to look for that lead. Here comes the 14. Yeah, if you're named Johnny Gardner and Kyle Matthews and others, whoever led a lap that's in the battle for the championship, they really don't want to see that 14 lead a lap. That's not good. Because speaking of Evans, here he comes. Kyle Keith trying to deny. If I were Keith, I would just wait back in line. That's, that's what you got to do. Stay in line. And more importantly, try to sneak underneath when you get that opportunity. Qualls, Al Morego, and Brock are going to not battle for this win. Coming to the line. Kyle Keefe trying to get some momentum so he can make a pass on that 14 coming on the inside there off the turn. Trying to see if he can shove him out of line. But no luck whatsoever. Rob Evans looks like he's going to lead a lap heading to the white flag. Keith looks underneath to the line. White flag displayed. Rob Evans is going to lead the lap. Safe to say. He's going to try to win. But I don't know if he's going to have enough time to hold off Kyle Keith and others there. Because here comes Kyle Keith for the lead. Here comes Zachary Fitzwater. Jessica Shaw now that inside line starting to work on that 14. That's the time to knock the 14 to the high line because then everyone's going to pass him. And when I mean everyone, I mean everyone. Keith out in the point. Trying to win his first race of the season, that 93. And I think this... This would be his uh, second career win, too, of the series. Oh, Sicoli and Gardner kind of rubbing doors there, but they keep it together. And that 14 nearly fell to the rear of the field. Because now here comes Ember Ross. Here comes Ben Crouch. Oh, Keith, not in a good spot right there. Because look at Kev Shear three wide on the left side. Fitzwater shuts the door. This would be big for Fitzwater. Remember, he's fifth in the points. He's trying to do what he can to hunt down Rob Evans. Kev Shearer looking for a second win of the season. Can he make a move right now? Here comes Shearer for the lead. In the DeWalt Ford trying to pick up his second win of the season and his second career win. Fitzwater not going to win this race. But Shearer's trying to make a statement. Here comes Sheldon on the inside trying to steal the victory. To the line, side by side. It'll be Shelton. Shelton just got enough, and she'll win here at Hogzilla Speed Park. And look at that. Carter Friesen edged out Shearer for second. Rob Evans will come away 10th there. But who did he edge out? Looked like uh, he had edged out McIntyre. Only 14 cars bound for the win. Thanks to Alan Morego slapping the wall there and Rob Evans, man, he's going to gain more, more points off of plenty of drivers there. What he did not gain off of was Kev Shear. He's going to gain about seven points, which really ain't a whole lot, but it's something. And Fitzwater barely finished ahead of Rob Evans. But I'm telling you, that 14 has been so consistent. But in the meantime, Jessica Shelton in the nine going to celebrate a victory. Top 10 as follows the Shelton, Friesen, Shear, Zorlin, Sicoli, Bishop, Gardner, Ross, Fitzwater, and Rob Evans. So here's the rest of your finishing results here as you can see. As I Sorry, I just had a message on my phone just trying to read it. As mentioned, uh, 23 cars. Excuse me there. What, what is wrong with me there? 23 cars will finish the race. 
with 22 finishing the lead lap, and Garcia being the only one to lap down. Everyone else, 24th on down, all out of the race due to the wrecks taking play. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you like to be sure to give a like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe your part of the channel by hitting that subscribe button. As you've been watching a production of the NSCRA Offline Racing at its best, you'll probably see anyone that's over a certain point, which I want to say it is... Let me actually do quick math here, because, you know... Uh, mainly a total of 126, that's just because it's the 42 to 1, and then, uh, uh, let me think here, because I gotta get the whole, 138 it looks like is what my thing is telling me. Because there's three races left, so yep, that's indeed the case. So, other than that. Thank you guys for watching if you've been watching the production of the NCRA Offline Racing at its best. Congrats to Shell one last time the victory, and we will see you guys for our next race that'll take place till then, which I think is Texas. I'm getting a report. Yes, it is Texas. All right, till then, goodbye, everybody.